I need the car that's off the hook. Old school dope look. Paint job got them shook. You are now listening to a power requires hustle presentation. I say this a power requires hustle presentation only because we're recording it in, in the rabbit hole studio. But um, more or less, this is going to be a really cool variety show so we can more or less talk about anything that we want to. It can either be current events or um, you guys can give us um, ideas of what you want us to talk about. That's that's totally cool. We could work it into a on-demand type thing if you want. But uh, we're going to start this out on YouTube. If it starts picking up steam, we're going to start up a, um... Air Week. A what? Air Week. Air Week. Air Week, baby. Every single week. No, but we'll set up a, a Patreon account and, like, really, um, take it the, the whole, uh, distance if that's what you guys want to do with yourselves. But, anywho, so I'm sitting here with Cooper uh, Poco, man, and, uh, Cooper, I'm under the impression that you're going back to, uh, Uganda. Yeah, I'm going back to Uganda. This will be my second time this year. Or second time overall going to Uganda. Two times, uh, two years in a row, yes. Right. Okay, yeah. And dude, that's beautiful shit. So, like, what is it? Well, uh, last year was a mission trip. What are you this doing this year? Mission year? Trip okay. Again. But uh, each year is a little bit different. It's just, it's so crazy. Different you know? missions? Right. It's crazy to think, you know, there's people over there, even witness to and talk to. It's crazy. And it's just, it's so much different than it is in the United States. Oh, yeah, I saw some videos of that crazy shit. Hey, you know what's cool, man, is uh, I have a couple people from over there that follow me on Facebook. Oh, really? And, yeah, dude, super cool, super humble human beings, man. And um, it's just a different world, man, when you're, like, complaining because, like, uh, a radio station isn't picking up your album and then like those motherfuckers don't know when they're gonna eat next <laughs> you know like it immediately makes you kind of feel bad in a lot of instances because right. you're like man right. but that's what that's um like would you like me to tell you about the poverty like the difference it is there than what we think of I mean, you're more than welcome to freestyle about your trip, and, and you know what? What were your experiences over there? I think the first thing had to be people. I mean, there. I th I think it's funny that that you know, in their eyes, we're the best people ever. I, I mean, I don't mean that we're better than anybody else. They just look at you guys as really good right. people because you're taking time to help and them. You yeah. gotta. Most people are Christian anyways. It's 80%, 10% Muslim, and the rest are whatever. But, like, it's it's crazy in them. In Uganda, for that matter. Yes, yes, okay. it's crazy in them. <laughs> Not in the whole like, world. Like, they look at us so highly because of our slogan in the U.S. Do you know what it says on the uh, U.S. dollar and quarters? Uh, in God we trust. In God we trust. Yeah, yeah real shit. So they, they literally think that we are a nation built upon God. I know that's how it America started practically. Yeah. But I nowadays, mean, look, we have our fundamentals and whatnot. I think that we've just Americans in a whole have gotten so caught up in themselves. Yeah, ourselves. but at the same time, man, the whole rest of the world's kind of always been like that. You got to think like America is you know really young compared to. I mean, there's houses in fucking Italy that people live in that are literally older than the United States <laughs> as a as a country is, and that's right. just crazy to think that you know these generations and generations and generations of people are still living in these fucking houses, restoring them after earthquakes and in between right. like horrible crazy shit there, there, there's some things i like better in africa than i like here too like did you know in, in uganda they had their own coca-cola company no extra preservatives or nothing fresh bottles what no shit yeah dude i bought this uh it was this turtle made out of barbed wire and for its shells on the back is a whole bunch of their uh their bottle caps from their coke it's got a great one. It's crazy. I tell you, though, I think the scariest moment there was uh, when somebody put ice in my water or in my, my juice. 
Because there you can't drink their water or anything like that. Oh, it I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. So that probably freaked you out. Mm-hmm. Like you thought your insides would go <laughs> fucking rot out or something. Oh, I'm gonna die. I, th- I think the worst night had to be the night there was a rip in my mosquito net. Oh, blah. And I got bit on the neck that night. Oh. And the next day, oh, I feel so bad. Already taking malaria pills, sleeping under bug nets. Oh, it's crazy. I mean, look, no, no good deed goes unpunished. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, Africa's a lot different than what I think Americans picture Africa. When we hear Africa, what do you think? Sticks. Yeah, I mean, you immediately assume. Exactly. Yeah, you know what you I, you you think or what I think. I think of that that uh, Christian Children's Fund fucking poverty ass commercial where white dudes like walking right. down the street and he's like, yo, I, I, I would describe young young Uganda, Timothy or whatever the fuck. I, is. I would describe Uganda more as like a a Brazil or a Mexico type. Really, there's okay. all these markets, shops there. Tropic I weather. just feel like every because place is Uganda, like that because, like, like you, you require some kind of food source and a means of getting it. As long as there's a food source, somebody's going to find a way to sell it and profit off of it. So, like, a here, bartering here, system exists. Uganda's beautiful. Yeah. They're on the equator, and do you know what river runs through Uganda? No. The Nile River. No shit. That's cool. It's crazy to think, you know, like, I'm going through this ocean that's been here since Bible times untouched. Yeah. That's crazy to think about that, too, Uh because, like, so many things, like, in America, I think our problem is we're so far away from that. Like, you know, away from, like, the Nile River, which is explained in such and such, and, Uh I mean, like, when you can physically see something... It just means more to people, and you know right. it's, uh, you know the Nile River would have a huge amount of significance. Really, everything in Mesopotamia mm-hmm. in general just, it almost cost me as a human being because I thirst for information and I study old religions of all types just because like it's, it's incredibly fascinating to see the evolution. Uh, and I hate even using that mm-hmm. word, but just the evolution of the human mind for a, a couple thousand years has just been extravagant, you know. But nowhere in like um, people's dialogue Very and the, yeah, never is it like something where I'm like, wow, that's a leap and bound over what our technology is. Aside from like. Mm-hmm. Da Vinci writings and some Tesla stuff. Uh, Albert Einstein stuff was cool, but like the theory of relativity is kind of... It's just a theory because theories are opinionated. You know, it's not... It's based in fact, but kind of not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those weird things. Well, well now do you want to hear... I think the hardest part of Uganda was for me. What? What was the hard? So the 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 bug net ripping and you getting fucking daggered in the throat but, wasn't the bad part but, of but Uganda. But this part really hit home for me was when we went to the uh, orphanages. Oh, bro, yes. It's, it's crazy seeing all these babies infected with HIV and just left to die. Super but, sad, dude. But right next to that place was a home for women. Wow, no shit. And it was rough for me seeing how many women there. And between 14 and 20 women were there. Most of them were below 14 years old. Wow, that's fucked up. just them either being raped, not being taught right, or, you know, it's, sometimes it just happens. Yeah. And it really hit home with me because I, I think about the growing problem of... Uh, Teenage pregnancy, even here. Yeah, Nowadays, I could imagine. I see yeah. So many women just pregnant at young ages. I think that it's different though, because like in the okay, for example, I'm older than you. Mm-hmm. So like when I was in school, for people that don't know, I'm almost thirty three. Cooper's not. What are you twenty? I am twenty. He's this fucking July will be twenty. Twenty first. Okay, so. Fucking streamers and uh, party noise slappers aside. Um, when I was in high school, 
there wasn't a whole lot of girls that were pregnant because it just wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, kids were having sex, but um, I don't know. It just, maybe we were bad at it. <laughs> I don't know, bruh. There wasn't a whole lot of, of, of people getting pregnant. Um, it just wasn't happening. But it's different because young people, uh, young people develop intelligence because they learn, right? And when you're a young person, they pile all this intelligence on you because your brain is maturing and just absorbing like a sponge. Well, now we're in the digital age where we can literally find every chunk of information we could possibly want to on our phones and like i'll literally catch myself trying to do like hop on google or hop on youtube and listen to some intellectual shit and if you google intellectual people talking um it'll be like seminar shit uh, totally opinionated don't even waste your time i listen to that shit off and on for like eight hours trying to find something i wanted to fucking listen to or you can find like um mysteries of the bible type stuff which is cool as shit but like it's cut up real bad mm -hmm. and, and 90s a and e and uh it's fucked <laughs> it's just really rough dude but we my, my point is we have all of this information at our grasp we can find the truth if we want to. And what do we do? Instead, we hop on fucking Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, stupid shit, stupid shit, oh, stupid shit. Stupid and I'm a victim. Of, I, I'm, 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 I'm guilty of all of that. Because, dude, I, I, I'm... I You're subscribed in all of that phone. shit. Yeah. yeah, and it's... Oh, dude, it fucking sucks. I mean, it does and it doesn't. Because it's cool to be able to fucking get at all of my people from all over the world and... That's cool, but you know, that, that's such a great thing. Like, uh, like I still email a buddy I have in Uganda every month. Oh, that's so cool, and man! He's gonna see me whenever I come yeah. back. It, it's just great to see, you know, that he's still doing good. He just had a child there. Oh, that's awesome, right? Dude. Just I, if I could explain to you the smile on his face having that child. Oh, I uh, could imagine, man. So that's beautiful. dope. You know, I can only pray that they stay in good health. Baby was sick when it came out, though. No shit. Sure. I mean... Which is always scary. It happens. Like, we went through all kinds of crazy shit with Luna. Um, you know, my, my oldest daughter. Uh, well, my oldest child in general, mm -hmm. I guess. You know, and then everything worked itself out, you know, and... You know, sometimes you just have to have faith in a situation. You ain't got nothing else, you know. I mean, you could throw all the money at medical science you want to, but at the end of the day, dude, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> medical science. Uh, think about the Notre Dame. They got $2 billion in a day or something yeah, like that I got, yeah. to fix it. And here's my thing. Um... People get, like, really outraged, like, oh, well, you know. And I'm like, like, you you think that they're not going to rebuild their fucking church? I mean, it, like, dude, there's a lot of money involved with it. There's, you know what's yeah. one thing I haven't heard since it burned? What happened to all the artifacts inside Notre Dame? Here's the thing. Um, I think it's, a, it, it's like one of those things with, like, the Smithsonian. Where, like, if a giant corpse or whatever is found, they, um, man, they go and they, they get it and they, and it's theirs and then it goes Dude, to their... They have the, uh, the crown that they say Jesus wore. They have a piece of the yeah, cross there. Yeah, yeah, You know, they nails. keep bones of all their saints yeah well i mean look i don't think a whole i don't know how much of that got destroyed one way or another um i, heard that. I don't know at the end of the day man it's like it, 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 faith is one of those funny things okay because you it, it, a lot of people have to have to see something it goes back to like the nile river and like how we're so far away physically so far away from Mesopotamia that we're almost inside so far away from there too. Let me tell you one thing that I'm not, I'm not going to miss about going to Uganda has to be the flight now that you're talking about the distance. Ha! Dude, yeah, I bet. We, we, we fly from here to uh -huh. Michigan to Amsterdam and Europe. Oh, hold up. How then, far is Michigan to Amsterdam? 
Michigan to Amsterdam is... It's what, 12 hours? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then we take a seven-hour flight past Uganda into Entebbe or something like that. And then so, double back? And then land, yeah, double back, and then it goes back to Amsterdam. Holy Dude, shit. Dude, it's like almost two, three days of travel. I not have any issues flying, except for on my last flight. It was this uh, Danish air flight. And they did not have any of the little oxygen things. Oh, that so you just oh, uh, you just that sit there and you flight, feel hot. That and... last flight, I came back and forth oh. between the bathroom. Oh, that was the only flight that just Dude. killed me. I still kind of have like the, uh, me personally. I'm scared of heights. So when I went out to L.A. to right. film my video with the Joker, I made myself the over the window the ocean to over the desert yeah fuck all that nah dude i didn't fly I, over I never, ocean i never had a window seat nah. on that flight neither nah dude i had to have window seats so like i had to like scare myself and there was at one point they were like when i was leaving evansville to go to um chicago mm -hmm. o'hara they were like, um, do you want to move up to uh, my buddy, my buddy's, uh, my buddy Zach from high school. Zach Will, his mom was like a stewardess. And she was like, hey, do you want to move up to uh, first class? And I was like, hold up, are you serious? And she was like, yeah, man, you know, Zach told me, you know, you're going out to L.A. And he said, uh, you know, all this shit. So I was like, man, that's really cool. You're really going to move me up to, to first class? And she was like, yeah, if you want to go up there, cool, I got you. And um, I thought about it, and I was like, man, I got this seat for a reason. I got this window seat for a reason. Mm -hmm. I stuck with it. But, okay, later on in life. I'm listening to a wrestling podcast and Tommy Dreamer is talking and he had the same thing happen to him on the plane and like this magical moment of getting moved to That's first awesome. class. No, it's not. This is why no, it's not. Because like Tommy Dreamer, the, uh, he fucking told this story on this podcast because the reason why they moved him to first class was because he was a big fat guy like I am and they were <laughs> they were going to have him stabilize the fucking oh plane. So goodness. the only reason why Wait, they were gosh. moving me was to stabilize the fucking plane. And I literally thought for like two years that I was just the Rich shit. And the they, were, <laughs> they were just... <laughs> but, dude, I, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to move. I'm just... And dude, they kept asking me because I and then like they would like walk around the plane and like they looked really <laughs> nervous so I realized like I probably were worried that my fat ass was going to make a wobbly or so shit oh, uh, so funny we don't even gotta go to the bathroom just oh we got some uh, <laughs> we got some up and down some uh, blockage oh dude it's rough dude but um, for years dude I thought I was just a shit cause oh. I, I was, and then you know I was listening to a podcast trying to learn some shit uh, about the business and my brother guy's feelings hurt. It's so funny, oh, dude. Sad lesson. <coughs> sad lesson. Don't be fat. No shit. But yeah, man, the world is um um looking up for you. It seems like Uganda sounds like it's the fucking place mm -hmm. to be, buddy. Like I know. I mean, really, it sounds like you you have a great time and, and it's meaningful that you're out there. And uh, what's special about this year's trip is that I have a friend gun with me this year. Who you take it with you? I went to high school with this guy. Okay, so you're gonna take him over there. He went to the same church as me. Uh, oh, cool. So I was like, dude, do you want to go on a mission trip with me? I mean, last year I really didn't know the people I went with, which I feel like helped me connect to the people better. Yeah. But like, it, it's special to me that I get to be there with him for his first mission trip ever. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I mean, after if you keep going year after year, man. Right, that's what yeah. I want to do. I mean, I've learned that like with the wrestling thing, man, um after a while you just um man, you end up being one of the older guys. Mm -hmm. You know, years and years and years and years and years go by. It's the same thing with rappers, man. Like I'll go to a show and we'll go to Indianapolis and get booked. And, um, man, I go in there and, like, all the rappers are, like, there's a young wave of them and then a, a middle-aged, not middle-aged, but you get what I'm saying, like a 30s-year-old mm -hmm. group. And then there's, like, the, so the older it. cats that are fucking getting paid and closing the shows and they're, like, yeah. 42 and been famous for 10 fucking years. 
But it's cool, man, because like I don't, I will, I couldn't imagine having that stress on me. Like, dude, I've closed events before, and and it's not horrible, but <clears throat> it has its 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 ups and downs. It really does. NFW returns to the Metro Sports Center April twenty seventh, baby. What and, time? Uh, 7.30 bell Seven. time. Last time the show was packed, man. Oh, dude. I had to park in a no parking spot. Dude. <laughs> I was afraid to come, come, come by. Give me a little there ticket. Go, there go, uh, blast you. Like, it's a, it's a family event. No, I mean, dude, it was an amazing event. Every mm -hmm. NFW show is amazing. And you know what? I started out... Um, at an NFW show, chilling in the the crowd, man, and and oh, it just changed my whole life. I went home that night after seeing that show. I was like, dude, I gotta be a part of this. So I went home and sent a little a little email, or maybe it was a Facebook message. So, I can't remember. So my question for you about wrestling, what is, uh, do you see a lot of guys your age who you used to wrestle with still wrestle with you today? Um, it's different. It's different. It's different. Like, um, a bunch of the guys that were my age, um, that I wrestle with in the day, um, they, they, like, went through, like, these bouts with it, where they would, like, really be about it, and then, like, something would happen, and life would happen, and they have to, like, um... Uh, you know, leave wrestling in one aspect or another. And then sometimes it was just like a company would stop. Sometimes they couldn't get their uh, Kentucky license renewed. I mean, there was a lot of a lot of things. But a bunch of those dudes have been doing it for years, you know, and um, are still around. And, uh, dude, phenomenal. Uh, you know, art is something that matures over time. So, you know, the older the wrestler, the longer they've been doing it, the better that they get at it, you know. So, I know you as a wrestler watches wrestling, too. I do, yeah. You as a wrestler. Who is your favorite wrestler? Uh, like, all time or now or like... All time. Okay. Because uh, you why? couldn't be like, who do you like on SmackDown? Because, <laughs> like, I don't know who's fucking where in the world. Um, I'll tell you one thing right now, man. Um, I really, really think Carl Anderson, um, is like, uh, one of the most underrated, most talented, uh, bad guys in the business. And, um, it, it, I mean, he can get over in the PG format, but like seeing the stuff that he did in Japan was over the top dope. Like he was called Machine Gun and like he literally... Acted like he he would be introduced and he would act like he was shooting a machine gun <laughs> and dude they did the sound effect they just ah Tommy gun the fucking crowd bro and the first time I saw that you not even seeing him nowadays. not yeah a hundred percent you cannot fucking do that here <laughs> but seeing him do it there man I popped for it so much because I was like man this motherfucker's it, it was just as cool to me as seeing Steve Austin crack open two beers and and pour them all over his fucking right. face. Like I just thought I do I thought it was so fucking tight and they had the sound effect they're like ah that was so fucking unique and so cool. So um yeah, Carl Anderson um phenomenal phenomenal fucking wrestler. I really feel like he could um be the WWE's next Next big star, man, he really fucking could. And um, and Gallows, his partner, uh, he's a he's an older cat. I don't know how much older he is, but like he's been wrestling for a while. So like eventually they'll they'll want to do their own thing, man. And um, I hope that WWE fucking rides with him. I mean, but I mean we like fucking Nakamura. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we fucking love him. And As I say, Shitsuke Sakamura. <laughs> Shitsuke Sakamura. <laughs> no, I mean, he's fucking phenomenal, dude. He's a, a he great is. artist, man. And um, I like uh, a bunch of, uh, like, uh, Bullet Club. I love everything about those dudes, man. Um, Oh, dude. So, sidebar. We're talking about wrestling. Um, All Elite Wrestling is the Bullet Club and Cody Rhodes fucking spin-off company, right? Dude, Goldust Gold. is gonna wrestle his brother 
at their fucking next event, May 25th. And brah! I'm so excited for it, because, like, I always thought, like, everybody was talking, like, you know how Kofi Kingston's, like, mm. the their, their champion now? Which I'm cool with. 100% Kofi's tight, whatever. Um, dudes are saying he's too small. I'm like, whatever, dude. I've, I've had, I got pinned by a, a fucking 11-year-old once. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, cool. Who cares? <laughs> like, really, it's a fucking work. Like, you can't lose to AJ Styles because he's... A hundred pounds lighter than you? Get the fuck out of here. You know, pretend better. Like, what the fuck? Um, but it's just one of those weird things, man, where, um, like, a bunch of people came at Kofi fucking sideways because he's not a big jacked up fucking huge dude. I'm like, he's one of the most athletic men in the entire fucking business. Maybe the world. And that's not an understatement. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's just one of those weird things. Uh, I feel like if Kofi is like put up on that platform where, oh, well, he's been doing it forever, he deserves it, then um, Goldust sure the fuck deserves it because he's been doing it since, like, so long. 80, it, probably longer than I've been alive. Seriously, he probably has been because I'm 32. Maybe not. I think that he said he was at the 25-year mark, which almost makes sense because, like, I don't know, fucking 89. But I feel like he was more like 85, 86 broken. I don't fucking know. It don't matter. Either, either ways, man, I'm really hyped that he's um, not fucking with WWE right now and he's going to do his own thing. Um, nothing against WWE, but everything against WWE. <laughs> their their wellness policy is dog shit. It is, dude. Oh, you, for example, Teddy Hart. Is one of, um, like, Bret Hart's nephews, I think, right? Mm -hmm. He worked for WWE. He had a bag of fucking weed with him. They freaked the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I know Kurt Angle. Like, he was sitting in a hotel room with Kurt Angle. He lived with him for, like, three days. And he pulled out a bag of weed. And Kurt Angle was like, what are you doing with this shit? Get that shit the fuck away from me. My wife does that. I'm not into it. Um, like, I'm a well, Olympic... Think those wrestlers are role models to kids. Yeah, dude, he's a... I mean, he was on, like, a Wheaties box at one point. <laughs> like, he does not... No, he doesn't want that, that negativity. So, yeah, man, it, it's a matter of public persona. Which kind of sucks, dude. And it's a it's a real PG world. It is, man. You gotta be careful what the fuck you say on the internet. I have had a lot PC, of people, bro. Go, <laughs> so PC. I'll tell you one thing that happened to me be right before everything was PC. But this is when I realized I couldn't say anything on the fucking internet that I wanted to anymore. All right. So it was the anniversary that Robin Williams died. All right. Oh. Uh, yeah, you, dude. Okay, so it was the the year anniversary that Robin Williams died, and and so, like a news outlet was like, "Yo, um, uh, Robin Williams would have been fifty five years old today, or whatever the fuck. I don't remember how old he was." And I made uh, a comment, something like, um, "You guys are really sad, and that's cool." But don't you know that Robin Williams didn't want to celebrate his birthday this year or something like that? And dude, the whole internet, dude, the whole internet, I, dude, I had to, I had to apologize all over myself. I didn't even look at it like in a funny aspect. A serious it, way. It was seriously just like a respect this man, leave him alone kind of thing. And then people thought that I was making fun of him. And like, fucking rain, hell on me. This one girl inboxed me. And um, I had never talked to her a day in my life. She was a, a, a internet model. And she inboxed me with, like, this book about how, like, Robert Williams and Aladdin raised her and all this shit and all this and this stuff. And I'm like, come on, look. I was just meaning, like, Robert Williams killed himself, bro. He committed suicide. Like, leave that man the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? Let him be done. Let him, let him, let him be if that's what he wanted, man. That's all I was getting at. But, dude, that was the moment when I realized, holy fuck. We're going to get to the point where we're not going to be able to say anything 
on social media at all. And dude, I was right. Control. <laughs> dude, it matters, man. It does. It's it's fucked up. All right, you gonna pause here? For what? Get a fucking drink. This is America. Well, look, I plug my album. Yo, America. This is King Cole, the rapper. I just want to remind you that April 30th, King Cole down the rabbit hole drops on all major digital distribution outlets. I'm talking Spotify. I'm talking Google Play. I'm talking Amazon. All over YouTube. All over everything, baby. Every media outlet. I'm talking Tidal. I'm talking all of them, baby. We are all over the world. Follow me on TikTok at King Code is Alive. Follow me on Instagram at The Real King Code. On Twitter at The Real King Code. We cover wrestling, we cover rap music. Oh, let's plug the poster too. So, right now, if you act now, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, dude, you get that double sided poster with that uh, King Code uh, Down the Rabbit Hole album. You can hop up on my web store, kingcodemerch.bigcartel.com. King Code Merch. Dot bigcartel.com. So, so what inspired you to write your album? What oh, this new one? Your new one, yes. Okay, so the Down the Rabbit Hole album, um, I wrote the title track. And um, really, I wrote a whole bunch of songs for, for these different albums. And then we were kind of piecing together what went with what. And James was like... Um, what do you feel like the uh, the title track would be if you put out this album? I was like, if we're going from a title track perspective, which between us, I actually don't like doing that shit. I hate it when I buy an album and it's the uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls album or whatever the fuck. And then like the first songs For Whom the Bell Tolls. I actually hated that growing up. I don't know why I decided to put out that album. But, um, anywho, so we were going through the tracks and, you know, James was like, hey, you know, what would be the, the title track? What's your favorite song on the album? I was like, dude, Rabbit Hole by far. So we kind of based the, based the album. Around yeah. The album. And then, dude, it, it came like the Alice in Wonderland the theme. theme developed. And then people were like, I know a lot of people were like, heard the album and listened through it and were like. You don't mention Alice once. I'm like, it's not a fucking... It's not an Alice in Wonderland walkthrough, bruh. It's not fucking uh, a, a telltale fucking story like that, man. It's just influenced by... Uh, I don't know. Who, who did the art on the album? Oh, dude. So the art was done by Justin Parker, who, uh, who runs Horrible Home Video... The dude is a genius. He's worked on anybody that's anyone's art. And um, knocked it out the park. In fact, so much so that um, I'm I'm working on two other albums to finish out the trilogy. And the second one is going to be called Through the Quicksilver. And I'm going to have him um, design that one as well. And uh, the third one, I don't have a name for it yet. I don't even know when that's going to come gonna out. You're going to make another just drink it at Rich, Volume 4. No, <laughs> no, it's it's going to be at home. No, it's going to be it's going to be um another another Wonderland type thing. But the first album was um. You should do like an apocalypse album or something. Dude, I like could that. do that. Yeah. Well, we did. We do have a a couple songs. We have like four songs wrote for an album like that. But um, we never had. And really, it was just like the file that caught off the really fucked up songs like uh, I have this one it's really fucked up um, that I'll probably never publish new album April 30th next wrestling show April 27th Metro Sports Center so we redid our whole online store pain in the ass because we actually redid it twice in one weekend and I mean I say we but my wife did it <laughs> And uh, she had this idea for a 420 sale. Superman dope. A 420 sale. Yeah, 420 sale. So what we did was um, all the albums besides Rabbit Hole. So Drink 1, 2, and 3 and Drink Alone were all $4.20 a pop. 
And, um... What? Oh, yeah, like... I, people at home can't see your hand signals. Be like, yes, that is agreeable. <laughs> I like that your, your albums were so... <laughs> Agreeable, yeah, yeah, dude. But that you know, and anywho, so those were four dollars and twenty cents each, and then everything, all the other merchandise was twenty percent off over a certain amount or whatever the fuck. I don't remember. But anyway, so we had that sale happen, and then we had to switch the the store back. So we went through, and anything that um we didn't want on the store we do for years we've meant to just overhaul it so do we took a bunch of stuff down and got rid of any artists that aren't on the label right, we got rid of a lot of changes yeah we made a, a bunch of changes to it but dude we've got so much king cold shit now do we just need a room anyway so it's like mm. pff, pff, move this around move that around make things work yeah it's been great man it's been straight it's been a, a beautiful life. I can't complain, man. Music has been cracking off really well. Um, our online um, spins and sales have been straight, man. They've been really cool. Oh, you know what? April 30th, we've got our News For You interview uh, drops, too. So, like, yeah, I'm excited about that, man. That's next Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll be hitting the um, news for you office, man. And Tommy Ellis, I'm going to holler at him and just be like, yo, drop a bunch of those on me. And then I think I'm going to take them by Taroni's and just sign a bunch of them and just boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm saying? But dude, down the rabbit hole is what it is. It really influenced me. It's like an album about, uh, you know, drug addiction and shit mm -hmm. like that. Um, or at least key parts of it are. Just. It, Different addictions from different perspectives. Like, Down the Rabbit Hole itself dives into, like, um, like heroin, opiates, shit like that. All right? And then it smooths down to, like, alcohol songs. Through the Quicksilver albums could be a little different because it's more of a, like, reflecting on self album. So it's more based around, like, depression and, like, trying to reinvent yourself by looking from the outside in type things and then the third album is more of a um it's got more of a positive outlook it's more of a brave album you know i really i was telling adrian this i was like dude people that liked rabbit hole um won't necessarily like the third one in the same aspect because it's just it's got a more positive vibe to it i can already tell while building it, you know, it's like really therapeutic building it, and you know, people, music hits people different ways, man, people, people like what they like, and there's no way around it, but I like publishing what I like, mm -hmm. so it's gonna stay that way, you know, I'm sizzling, yeah, anywho, Cooper, so, um, I think this was a really positive podcast, man, I think we should do this shit more often, mm -hmm. real talk. Alright. Uh, do you want to have, like, a cool-ass handle on, like, um, like a name or something? Are you going to be fucking Throat Cutter Cooper or some <laughs> shit? Uh, you can, you can add me on, uh, on YouTube. You can put me under as one of the people that work on it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you'll have to be a, uh... With my uh, gaming account. Yeah, dude, that's legit. Yeah, I'll tag you and all that stuff. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out really well you want to go ahead and drop your gamer um tag and all your your info it's a it's just my name cooper pecori cooper pecori uh -huh. all right look you could i need to spell my last name i mean we'll put it in the uh the details i'm sorry anywho power requires hustle this king called the rapper that's cooper poco we're going to peace out, y'all. Thank you for listening. Right. Tell your motherfucking people about us, man. Power requires hustle all day, every day. Google us, follow us, subscribe.